Good morning and welcome to my morning rant. This morning I want to talk to you guys about um, uh, the scriptures in Nehemiah 9, uh, 38. There's a little phrase in there that I want to pull out. And because of all this, we make a sure covenant. And I want to encourage you guys because I was there. I was. I had turned my back on God and I actually said to him that I was going to become the best sinner he ever saw. And I proceeded to make my case, but uh, the Holy Spirit just kept coming at me and coming after me. And I, the Bible tells us in the scriptures, it's really a powerful scripture. Even though we are in a state of rebelliousness and um, we have rebelled against God, he, he tells us this in in the Second Chronicles. He says, "If my people, which are called." By my name, so we are identified as Christians. We have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God, and it was a true conversion. Um, I don't want to negate your conversion or mine. It was a powerful uh, conversion, but because of things in my life and my lack of knowledge, I didn't understand what was going on. And uh, I wasn't taught right. I didn't study correctly. And so I uh, withdrew myself from my relationship with my God and with my Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, uh, But the Holy Spirit did not give up on me. And um, that's why I tell you guys that God loves you. This is the only religion that I know, uh, if you call it a religion, that the God of this religion is in love with his subjects, his his subject is the Bible calls us sons uh, of God, his family, so much so that he died for them. I have not seen any other uh, belief system like of uh, God's belief system and what he has laid out for you and I. He says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. And that is a thing that you and I need to do because First of all, we are we become deceived to the place where we believe uh, a lie from the enemy, and we have to recognize who he is. And so he will lie to you all the time. You cannot help it. And so he has lied to you and say stuff like, you have gone so far that God will not forgive you. You know why he says that? Because he did it. He has gone so far that God is not going to forgive him. The Bible tells us that the angels, when they left, that that was their thing. They made that confession and they left. But God's creation, that is you and I. He says we need to not believe that lie when the devil comes and says to you that uh, you have gone so far. The requirements that he is saying is that we need to humble ourselves. We need to come with a heart a contrite heart, we need to come with one broken as we are, separated from him. And in that state, we humble ourselves, recognizing that we have harmed him with the decisions that we made, with the acts that we committed. If we can come to that space to recognize it and humble ourselves and say to him, God, forgive me. The Bible tells us, he says in Second uh, um, Peter, that God is not willing that any should perish. And so because he's not willing, it tells us that he is long-suffering uh, towards us, not willing that any should perish. And so because of this long-suffering that is in his character, he, uh, through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit hunts you and I down. And the Bible says that when we come to this place of humbleness, when we are come to this place where we are uh, uh, broken, realize what we have done. Uh, Jesus makes a statement that is such a powerful thing for us in Revelations 3, 20, 20. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. So God is there. Jesus is standing there. He is knocking. You and I are in our rebellious state, rebelling against him, rebelling against God, rebelling against the Holy Spirit, grieving the Holy Spirit, our behavior, our actions. But yet the Bible makes a way for us to come back home. It says in the scripture, this is, um, let's reason together. And he tells us here in, um, in Revelations chapter 3, 20, says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. 
If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. And so we see here that Jesus Christ is not condemning us, he's not pointing our sins to us, he's not saying any of those things. All he says, I am standing there knocking. If any man hears my voice, so you know that he's knocking, he's calling to you and I. He is calling that we would come sup with him. And so because of his love for us, he wants to do this. Again, I say, I have not seen any other belief system that talks about a God that wants to do that, like our God. And so Jesus Christ is knocking at your door, and he wants to come and sit there and with you. He, is, he promised that he will not, um, he will not bring our sins. He will not do any of those things, but he is only interested if we are listening, we hear his voice. The Bible tells us that he says, once we open the door, he will come in. And he wants to come in because he's knocking there. If he didn't want to come in, he wouldn't be standing there. And so he is standing there because he wants to come into our life and have a conversation. He says, um, we'll come in and we will sup with him. When you're supping with someone, you're talking with them, you're engaging, you are having this deep conversation about uh, what's going on in your life and uh, that he is having this with you saying that he is, he did, he understands your pain, he knows what you're going through, he identifies with it, he knows how to get you out of it, he understands all of those things that you're crying for, that you have need of. And he is inviting you, and it gives you an opportunity, as I say. And because of all of this, we make a sure covenant. So we are able, at this table, with Jesus Christ, to make a new covenant. And he encourages us to come to that space so that we can make a new covenant him. And even though um, I did all those crazy things in my life, I walked away from God. I was able to come back because of the Holy Spirit coming after me, because of Jesus knocking on the door. And um, eventually, I, I, I humbled myself. As the scripture says, um, my people that are called by name, my name, they shall humble, if they shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will heal their land. The land represents here and heal me, my family, my relationship with him. And as a result, I was able in that space of supping with Jesus, of that space of humbleness, I was able to make a new, I make a sure and a new covenant, scripture tells us. And so I am, I know within my heart that God is offering the same to you. He offered it to me, and I did some things that uh, I felt that he was not able to um, forgive me from and of, but the Bible tells me that the blood of Jesus is more powerful than any sin I got. And so the Bible teaches us this. And so he wants you to come, it says in Isaiah, he puts it this way in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, he says, Come, let's settle the matter. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. So he is coming to take care of it. He wants to make the change, the transition in you so that you can become different, so that you can um, usher in the sure covenant because of all this. Why? Because of all of what God is going to do and you see his goodness because of all of that, you are now able to do as Revelation uh, uh, 3.20 and Isaiah 1.18. Uh, as far as the standing there, the, uh, the invitation is there. And God is inviting you to come. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, open. So he is inviting you. He's having this invitation 
that is there for you. And all you have to do is take it. As the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all shall come to repentance again. That invitation is there. God has invited you and I to come. Revelation, um, let me read Isaiah, Isaiah 118. Come now, let us settle this matter. Or another translation says, let us reason together. And as we come to this space of uh, um, and accepting his invitation, how do we do that? It tells us in that we read earlier in Second Chron- Chronicles, it says, if my people, which are called my name, shall humble themselves. You and I have to humble ourselves and recognize that we have failed. We have hurt the Holy Spirit. We have hurt the Father. Even though we have hurt Him, He, the invitation is still there, still extending hands to us that we may run into the Father's hand. And the Bible tells us that He hugs us, He holds us and protects us, and that He is there for you and I. But you and I have to come. We have to be in a state of humbleness that we recognize that our sin is not greater, has more power than the blood of Jesus Christ. For the Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all unrighteousness, all righteousness. So then how is yours, your sin that you have committed? Is it out of the realm of all? If it's out of the realm, realm of all, then Christ's blood and his sacrifice was insufficient. But because you are, whatever you do is in the realm of all sins, all of it, that you and I then have an opportunity. The invitation is still there for us. And do not let lie of the enemy. You have sinned so much that you can't be accepted back into the kingdom. That's not your fate. That is his fate. God took care of it for you and I, for his creation. And he came and he's still uh, inviting you and I. He tells us that we should come and let us settle the matter. Let us have a conversation. Let's, let's talk. And, um, he says, so that, um, and, and it says, and because of all of this, make a sure covenant so that we can renew our covenant with him. And so he promises a few things to us that will happen when we come. He says, let's settle the matter. Though your sin like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Jesus, that's the Father's, uh, uh, is, uh, coming to you. And Jesus makes another statement. And he says in Revelations 3.20, So behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice. So Jesus Christ is knocking and he's speaking. He's, he's, what is he saying? He's saying, come, come, let's have this conversation. Let's talk. And he says, and open the door. If you hear my voice and open the door, so that is your responsibility. He is knocking, he's standing there, he's knocking and he's saying something. It's your responsibility to open the door. And he says, once you open the door, he says, I will come in to you and sup with you. He didn't say I will come in there and condemn you. I will tell you how bad you are. I will tell you how evil you are. He said, no, he said, I will come in, I will sup with you and he with me. And so God wants to have this relationship and continue this relationship with you. But that invitation is there. It is up to you to accept it. And once you accept it, the Bible tells us that a few things happen that I went through to you, but it also gives you and I opportunity to do as the children of Israel did in Ezra in Nehemiah 9 verses 38. And because of all of this, we make a sure covenant with God. We renew our covenant because of what he's done in Isaiah 1, uh, 18, uh, because of what he has done in 
uh, Revelation 3.20 because of what he has done in Second Peter 3, uh, 9 because of what he has done for us and even more so in the scripture. I'm just using those scriptures to bring to your attention that your sin is not is encompassed within all and because your sin is in all the bible tells us that the blood of jesus christ cleanses us from all sin so you haven't gone to a place where god cannot forgive you the enemy has but that's his faith it is not yours it is not mine god still is inviting you and i and so i want you to take advantage of this invitation so that you can make a sure covenant. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. It also states that we walk by faith, not by faith.